Hello, family, friends, fans. It is Z-Man. It's been a while. I'm in residency right now, so what can I say? My hours are a little bit uh, craziness. <clears throat> but actually, my intern year has been pretty dang good. Uh, I've been able to do quite a bit. Um, today's purpose of the video is I mentioned a long time ago, like three months ago, that it's important to become proficient as a medical student um, with certain um, techniques. Uh, one of the things I mentioned was how to suture properly. Um, this involves two different things. Again, the reason I'm emphasizing this is that so when you're on your surgical rotations uh, for uh, medical school uh, or possibly even residency, you need to know, uh, or you shouldn't say you need to, it makes you look much better if you are proficient in basic things like knot tying, suturing, these types of things. Um, other stuff they'll teach you along the way, but the point is, is that th this is very helpful and it makes you look much better. Um, one of the things uh, that I emphasize is practicing before you get there. The reason is, is that let's say you're in surgery and your resident says, hey, do you want to tie a knot or do you know how to tie a knot? Do you know how to suture? If you're able to say yes and you're actually able to do it, they don't expect you to do it fast. But if you're able to do it and do it well, do it proficiently, um, the likelihood of you being asked again is much higher, and also it's more impressive. Um, I've told, I've been, I was told several times on my medical school surgery rotations, "Good job, Chris. Uh, you know that's that's awesome that you know how to do it." So practice makes perfect. So um, let's get into it. The first thing we're going to cover is going to uh, be the types of knots um, and the ways you tie them. So I'm using scrub pants because they're big enough strings that you're able to see what I'm, I'm doing. Um, like not trying to do a crotch shot here, but anyway. So there's two types of knots. We call it one-handed and two-handed knots, okay? If you are right-handed, okay? If you're right-handed, this is my right hand. So try to keep that in line. I know it's kind of mirrored. So if you're right-handed and you're doing a two-handed knot, there's a couple advantages to it. The two-handed knot allows you to do a surgeon's knot, and we'll show you what that means in just a, just a little bit. But the basic principle of the two-handed knot is when you throw your suture, it will come out the end, and it'll come like this, okay? So you'll have going underneath the tissue and then coming out the other end, and your needle's on one end. So what you'll do is you cross, you cross the suture, okay? So it came out like this. You cross it in your hands, okay? That's number one. Number two, if you're right-handed, you take your dominant hand, you make a C. I always talk about the C being the most important thing you can do uh, for the two-handed knot. And what you'll do at this point is you have to remember, um, so when you have your C like this, is you'll come around the other end, okay? Like this. So you're making it like this, okay? So you've crossed them, now you have it on this end, you come around the other end, so now you're basically encasing your finger in the suture. You clamp, clamp shut like this, clamp shut, move through the loop, okay? So again, so we'll see that again. You clamp, you move through this loop to the other side, and you pinch, you pinch the other suture, let go with your left hand, pull it through to the other side, so throw the loop to the other side, pull, pull, and you're down. That's one knot, okay? The next, the next throw you do is like this, over your thumb. So instead of your index finger, you're coming over your thumb now with the C. Still have the C, okay? Again, encase your thumb with the suture, okay? So you see that? You come on the other side of it, all right, like that. Clamp again, clamp, see? Rotate through the loop. Non-dominant hand. Let's go. Once you've clamped the other hand or that suture, throw it through the other side. Grab with the non-dominant hand. And if you notice, when I'm coming down with the knot, what am I doing with my index finger? I'm pushing down on the knot. That's very important until it's secure. So you're pulling with both hands, but you're pushing down, down on the non-dominant hand suture string until you get to the bottom, okay? On top of the knot, make sure it's secure. Uh, that's very important. Most, A lot of surgeons will critique you for that. 
Um, so the surgeon's knot. So again, we threw our the surgeon's knot used for um, part, uh, times where you want hemostasis or you want it to lock. Uh, so like let's say the tissue has quite a bit of tension on it or maybe some tension, and by that I mean it tries to pull apart from, you know, it tries to pull open more. A surgeon's knot allows you to lock the suture down more securely on the first throw. Um, so we throw our suture, we cross again. Okay, we're crossing. The surgeon's knot is, is easiest to do uh, when you're two-hand knot tying. So when we do one-handed knots, you'll see what I mean. You can't really do it with a one-handed. You do your C again. You encase it just like normal. You throw it through the loop just like normal with your pincher. You grab the non-dominant suture just like normal. But now here's the change. Once it's out the other side, you clamp again, same, same way. You come through again same way and you throw it through again. So now you have, you basically do the maneuver twice that I, that I showed you first. And if you notice, it kind of makes a, uh, kind of like a, uh, kind of a braided look to it. That braided look will allow it to lock down more and then you just tie like normal. You only do surgeons not on the first throw, okay? You'll never do it otherwise. So now that we've covered two handed knot tying real briefly, um, again, it has advantages of you can do surgeon's knots with it. It's uh, more uh, gentle uh, a lot of the time because you don't have to keep uh, as much tension on the sutures. Um, however, the disadvantages are that it is not very fast um, and the fact that um, it's more cumbersome because you're having to use two hands. Um, you're not able to usually keep instruments as easily in one hand. with. With the next knot, we'll see uh, the advantages being that it is faster, much faster, um, and you're able to hold instruments in one hand or the other. Um, I'll demonstrate here with my lovely squeaky Sophie giraffe. Um, all right, so one-handed knot is much more complicated. If you're going to do it, you throw the suture just like normal, it comes out. There we go. You cross just like normal, cross. Okay, and see if you'll notice right here on my left hand, I'm able to hold because I won't be tying with this hand. I'm able to hold an instrument if I want to, okay? I'm able to hold it in this hand and be able to tie with my right hand and do nothing with this hand except keep tension. So you can keep an instrument in your hand. I'll get that out of the way now so we can see better. So we've crossed. Now what do we do? So you're right-handed again, okay? You're right-handed. This is a, a more complex suture, so you're going to really have to pay attention on how to do this correctly. There's different techniques in the finger holding, but the basic principles are the same. By that, I mean some people like to hold with multiple fingers. Some people like to hold with just one finger. Um, I prefer uh, to hold with just uh, one finger. A couple of things that will help you during this is remember, sure, ju remember just to use your fingertips, okay? Just the fingertips. So if you're holding the suture like this, that's not as good as if you're holding it out here, okay? I personally like to start with a back throw, and you'll see what I mean by that. Um, so what this is, is you hold a suture like a pincher, okay? This is my right hand again, my right hand, because I am right-handed. And what you do now is very interesting, okay? So you grab, you use your middle finger, of the dominant hand, the one you're tying with. Remember, this hand is only going to keep tension. Okay, so pincher, you come under, under the non-dominant suture, you loop like this, and you come under the suture of your dominant hand. Okay, so again, pincher, middle finger, you're going to want to kind of be pulling back towards you. You pull under the non-dominant suture, and now you're back into the dominant suture hand. You then make a loop like this, okay? So that it looks like this around your finger. You pull through the hole. That's your first throw. Again, come down, index finger, boom, lock. All right, we'll go through that one more time after this. The next throw is going to be a C shape. So it's like the two-handed suture, but the two-handed, remember, you're just looped around either your index finger or your thumb. This one, you're gonna loop around both. In this particular one, I like to hold the suture like this or like this, depending on what you're comfortable with. But I like to do it like kind of around there. You kind of hold it like this and you make your C. So once you've hold, held it like this, you make your C by coming like that and you're still holding it. You see, that's how I'm holding the tension. 
Again, left hand only holding tension, not tying. So you make this C, and now you grasp around the non-dominant suture, non-dominant hand suture. Okay, this is going to be a little tough to see, so I'll try to show you a few, few different angles. Non-dominant hand suture, and then you come back towards your thumb. You almost make like a fist, and you're going to loop over this. Okay, so you're going to pull like this for the dominant. This is the dominant hand suture that I'm pulling on. Pulling on the dominant hand suture, and again, pulling it through the loop. Okay, so do that one more time. So the backhanded throw, again, I'm holding it like this in my, in my dominant hand non-dominant hand over here always keep tension with your non-dominant hand when you're tying these this is the most important part because if you lose tension in your left hand or your non-dominant hand it will it will fall apart your your uh your knot will fall apart okay so again so we come under like that all right so we're holding it like this we start here now we're going to come under the non-dominant suture pull back go under and now we're pulling on the dominant suture make our rotation and pulling through okay this is what it looks like pulling through the hole there again now we're holding tension like this we make like this okay we make our C our C we pull the non-dominant suture like this okay so we're kind of encasing our index finger just like the, the two-handed we're encasing the index finger. We're pulling in. Now we're pulling on the dominant hand suture. And we're pulling through that loop we have. Okay? Down. Okay, so that's how you do the one-handed uh, and two-handed uh, knot throwing. Suturing, there are a lot of different techniques. Uh, if there's some interest to this video, then I will, uh, <clears throat> then I will post. Uh, I'll bring some sutures home and uh, show you how to uh, use the God, I'm dark uh, I'll uh, I'll show you how to throw different types of suturing um, it's really hard some of the needling uh, or some of the needles uh, that we use and some of the uh, different materials I can go through all those uh, if there's interest for this video if not then I just assume people may just want to know how to throw uh, knots uh, I think that's probably so it is tough and uh, anyway I hope you all have a great day and good to see y'all and um, good luck with med school, residency, college. I have a lot of different people, high school, a lot of different people, a lot of different levels of education and uh, I'm, again I'm happy to help in any way I can um, and I hope that you all are inspired to do the same. See ya.